about time, the woman muttered, her voice barely above a whisper. But even that was enough to make Gao Feng's nose bleed. The masked cultivators and Duan He formed a circle around the yukatas while the woman walked along the wall. Then she stopped and lifted a hand high into the air, a blade forming itself in a swirling burst of eco. The blade was a foot across and as long as the woman was tall. In spite of this, she held it above her head with one hand. In a single smooth motion, she slowly rotated the blade down until it pointed toward the wall beneath her feet, and though she appeared to apply no pressure to the blade, it cut into the wall as easily as a dirt mound. Gao Fang caught the corners of her mouth turned downward a fraction of a second before she twisted the entire blade ninety degrees. He watched as crimson eco flowed in serpentine waves from her hand down the length of the blade and into the wall. A sound unlike anything he'd ever heard tore through the air, then, kaboom, the entire wall shook. Gao Feng, Hao Li, Tang Di, and the other elders were all suddenly grabbed after the explosion and were dragged through the air as the masked cultivators leapt from the top of the wall. Gao Feng was slammed onto his back the moment they touched down on the roof of a nearby building. He groaned in pain from a bump on his head, but quickly forgot about the pain due to the insane sight before him. A single line ran down the side of the otherwise unmarred wall. The sight of that line, more than anything, revealed the true power of the woman the invaders called Boss. Properly trained battle eco-cultivators could slice apart a tree from a dozen paces. Someone on the level of Fan Shun in her prime could slice through a stone wall from that same distance. But this was something Gao Feng had never imagined possible. He was shocked once again when the woman did it a second time. Twenty feet away from her first cut, a second one appeared. This time, Gao Feng got a front row view of the crimson wave as it traveled from the top of the wall to the base in the blink of an eye. Kaboom! The ground shook a second time as the light hit the ground and stopped dead. While he was captivated by the sight of Haven City's stalwart protector being dismantled before his eyes, Gao Feng became aware of movement around him. To his left, the matriarch of the Qiao clan was brought to her knees, her unmatched beauty marred with soot and drying blood. Her robe had been torn in multiple places, revealing a dangerous amount of creamy skin beneath. To his right, the Kai Patriarch, or what was left of him, was dropped onto the roof. He had been a bear of a man. Taller than most by half a head, the Kai clan's Patriarch was said to be the physically strongest of the three clan leaders. And yet, the thing dropped next to Gao Feng was little more than a sack of tenderized meat. I guess this is what that man meant about your organs bursting and your bones shattering. She did that with her voice? Gao Feng turned back to the wall in time to see the section she'd cut off begin to tip over. The piece of wall hit with enough force to shake the slum district so hard the buildings could no longer support their own weight, and the entire district collapsed in a giant heap of wood and stone. A tense silence pervaded Haven City after the collapse. The silence continued to grow as the dust began to settle. The living couldn't comprehend what had just happened right in front of them, and the dead didn't have time to care. Large, lizard-like constructs of stone and wood climbed over the fallen piece of wall and entered the city by the dozens. The entire situation had been pulled straight from Gao Feng's worst nightmare. What has been unleashed upon us?